Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 42. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with a rolling anti-lag feature. A rolling anti-lag is going to allow a turbocharged engine to generate boost pressure when we're trying to have a fixed speed that we're going to be launching from. So that might be 40 or 60 mile per hour, and you want to make sure that you're in boost. If you have a laggy turbo and you're making a bunch of power, you know that if you try to launch in third gear at 60 mile per hour and you're not brake boosting, you'll find that you can't generate the boost and you're not going to get a slingshot effect or a jump on the car that you're racing. A rolling anti-lag is going to allow essentially a moving uh, anti-lag type feature. We're going to be retarding the spark timing and adding additional fuel so that we rapidly generate the boost pressure that we want without having to go through doing brake boosting and that when we let go of the button that's going to activate our rolling anti-lag, we're going to have the boost build right where we want and we can have a slingshot effect and take the jump on the car that we're racing. So we're going to go over the programming details here for the PC Link software, making sure you integrate it properly and again, you generate the boost pressure you're after. We're gonna have a lot of things to cover. Let's jump into our video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with a rolling anti-lag feature programming in our PC Link software. Now our rolling anti-lag is gonna allow a turbocharged engine to generate boost pressure when we're going to go into a roll race. So if we wanna go and race somebody from a 40 mile per hour and on race or a 60 mile per hour and on race, we're gonna be moving at that point. If we enable our rolling anti-lag, we can retard our ignition timing, we can add fuel, and we can limit rev limit the engine at whatever we're holding it at, at that 60 mile per hour range and whatever gear we're going to be operating in, and we can find we can generate a ton of boost pressure. This is going to be an alternate to working with brake boosting, so if you're familiar with that concept where you're going to be pushing on the brakes and the gas pedal at the same time, that's going to create a higher thermal load on the engine and generate boost pressure. We'll find that the rolling anti-lag is way more effective and we can be very precise in exactly how much boost we want to build, so depending on how large your turbo is going to be, we can get very aggressive with our ignition retard. It's actually going to be probably easier on the engine, a little bit safer on the engine compared to brake boosting, and it's going to be my preferred way if I want to build boost again on a big turbo car in a roll race situation. So you can get the slingshot effect as soon as you go to start that roll race at let's say 60 miles per hour, you're gonna be bringing your vehicle up to 60 miles per hour, holding your momentary button that's gonna be tied in to your roll rate, your rolling anti-lag feature, and then you're gonna be, be able to go all right on the gas pedal, generate uh, whatever the boost pressure is going to be that you're programming, and then as soon as you wanna go and let the button go, the car is gonna be launching at 20 or 30 pounds of boost, or whatever that maximum boost you wanna be at, and you'll find that you can get the jump on whoever you're racing. So the rolling anti-lag is really a necessity if you're gonna be entering roll race competitions or you wanna do a roll race type race with someone. So let's take a look at how to set this up. It's actually super duper simple compared to the other training tutorials we were talking about, looking at our basic launch control and our advanced launch control. This is gonna be a lot more simplistic in nature to set up and configure. So let's go into our launch control here. We're gonna go into our launch mode. We're gonna go from off, and in this case, we're gonna be choosing our latched launch mode, or latched launch RPM here. Let's click OK, and let's say yes here. Now, we're gonna have some programming conditions we have to meet. This is actually really simple, again, compared to working with those other modes, the basic mode and the advanced mode. We're not gonna be using a launch RPM table here. We're not gonna be populating that. And in fact, we're not even gonna be programming a launch RPM because we're not using this as a launch limiter. We're only using this as a momentary limiter whenever we're going in and we want to hold ourselves back or limit the vehicle in the speed that we're trying to operate at and be able to implement having that ignition retard and the fuel at it so we generate that positive boost pressure on a turbo engine. So if we go here into our activation control, we have to assign this to a momentary button. This can't be assigned to a switched input. It doesn't work as well. We want to be able to hold our momentary button down. Typically, you want to go mount it on your uh, shift knob or on your steering wheel. You could repurpose a horn button sometimes to be able to allow you to use a momentary button. So when we push it in, that's going to activate our rolling anti-lag here. And when we let the button go, it'll then go right off. It'll turn right off. And we can find that the vehicle is going to start to accelerate at that much higher boost pressure. So what we'll do here in this case, I have a momentary button wired and configured into my DI1 or my digital one. So I'm going to select that right here. Now, my button that I have configured here is going to be a ground type button, meaning one leg of my momentary button is going to go to my chassis ground. The other leg or other wire of my momentary button has been wired into my digital one. In this configuration here, we're going to find we have to have our pull-up resistor and our activation state set to low. So pull-up resistor on, activation state low. Pull-up resistor needs to be on because we're turning the internal circuit. So we're referencing 12 volt. If we're going to be grounding, then the pin 
and then the low status here is because we're sending in. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.